Hey guys, Darren Carr here, coach of Wise Ocean Pods, and welcome back to another episode of our round preview series. On today's episode, we will be previewing round 10, and we'll be discussing all the popular trading and trade out targets, plus we're going through my own trades and captain options. So let's sort of just get straight into it. So to start off with the main trade out targets, I think for this week. So number one, we have uh, Matty Roberts. He's been traded out by 21k coaches already. I think this is a great option. His time's up. He is going to be losing a bunch of cash from here on out and really undoing a lot of that, uh, you know, cash generation that he has produced for the majority of the first part of the season. So he's been awesome for us, but unfortunately, it is his time to go. 600k, so it's not, not, don't need a huge amount of money to jump up to, you know, the likes of, you know, a lot of people are looking at Oliver this week, or you can even go to the top of the tree, it's not a huge amount, of, not a huge jump there, so I think he's a great option to jump off of, um, he's had a bit of a role change, so yeah, definitely time to go, he, where he's switched out into the wing, so yes, he is, definitely need, needs to go, and he's my number one trade out target this week, if you have him, time to go. Number two on the most traded out targets in the community is Will Graham. Obviously, he has been named out, so he is, he won't play again this week. So that's two weeks in a row he is not playing. Um, so, yeah, he is just red dot, 490k on our bench. And, yes, if you can use that cash, then I think he's a good option to move on. Um, probably helps a lot of our structure in terms of buy as well, with a lot of us being a little bit heavy in the round 14. I'd say, so here's one I, I'd definitely look, look at moving on. It's a bit of an interesting one for me, though, because I am I think I'm looking at holding just with a few other um, things I want to do. Hoping he comes back. I, I still don't see why they've dropped him. Um, maybe it's just the whole Darwin factor that he hasn't gone up there, so maybe if you can do other moves around him, then I probably maybe would look at recommend that, and maybe he comes back in next week, because there's no injury factor against, you know, why he isn't playing, and I think he's even being rested from VFL as well, so, well, whatever their league is, so, yeah, they are VFL, sorry. So, yeah, I, I do think he's a good trade-in, trade-out option, but I, he's probably a bit further down on my list here. Harvey Thomas is also in considerations for my main trade-out targets this week. I think he's number five from memory, so um, 409k, Break even of 73, so he's going to be starting to lose some cash gen generation now. So, um, definitely can go. My only question is, now that Kelly and Ash are out for the next six weeks, where does that leave him? Does that give him a permanent gig on the field for, you know, the next six weeks, ideally? Then he could become a really good buy player that we just hold. We know he can put up some decent scores. We've seen, you know, likes of 80s, 70s, um, even 100 at one point. So... He could provide a pretty decent option for us over the buys, especially with the you know the decent matchups he has. He's got um, the Cats, the round 11, but then he's got obviously round 12 buy, then round 13 he has Hawks. So he could provide a decent option during those that period. So um, it's a tricky one for me because I, I ideally want to move him on. He's obviously losing cash, but I want to see how the teams are named up before... Uh, deciding moving on, him on. If he sort of is named on the bench, like, and he's not on the field, then I think he you could possibly just move him on, just on the side of caution to, so he doesn't lose any more cash for you. Number four is Kobe McKercher, and obviously the news came out I think on Tuesday that he was being assessed for a sore foot that he's been managing a little bit, and it came out that he has bone bruising now, so he is out for an indefinite amount of time, just with that injury, and it's really a tricky one for us fantasy coaches, because it's, it's so hard to tell how long he's going to be out for, he could be out for a week, or he could be out for even the season, you know, that, that bru bone bruising is very, very tricky for us, um, I'm probably on the side of caution that it's best to just trade him, because he's got, what, he's got round... He's definitely missing this round, which has been confirmed. And he's got Port Adelaide next week, so... Um, more than likely, he'll miss that game anyway. So that means he won't be back until after round 12. He's by. Um, so that's three weeks without him. So you can't have 600k or nearabouts on that on your bench for sitting that long. So I think it's just best to move him on. Use that cash. 
then you can, you know, use that cash elsewhere. Use that cash cash elsewhere. Um, yeah. The interesting thing is that after his buy, he's got a pretty decent run in terms of, you know, um, midfielders or defenders. So I don't mind thinking about picking him up after his buy. So in, say, round 13, if he's named... Off the halfback, we've seen what he can do with, you know, the past three scores where he's pretty much averaging close to 100. So I wouldn't mind picking him up again and he could be another good option. So maybe keep that in mind with him. Um, but, yeah, I think on play on the side of caution with this one, just trade him out. But if he can do other things around him, then I don't mind um, playing that risky play and hoping he comes back next week. Of Dempsey is number 5, 4.5k coaches are trading him out. I do agree with this. Um, I haven't included him in my main trade-out targets because I think most people have already traded him out, but I think this is just a remainder of coaches now jumping off of him. Um, the interesting thing with him this week is that Cameron and Hawkins are out of the Geelong side, so they're being rested. So what does that mean for a Dempsey? Does he then become... The second tool target for them up forward behind like an Oliver Henry, I think his name is. Um, or does he continue on that wing role? Or, or yeah, that's the that's a tricky thing. Does his role change and then it is less likely he's going to be scoring as much? He's got Gold Coast as well, so it can be a bit of a trickier game for them. Um, Gold Coast have been pretty restrictive at most of the time, so I, I just think if you can get away with moving him on. I'd definitely be doing it. Just the forward status is probably what's worth holding on to if you need to field a forward. I know a few people are looking at moving on a, a Harley Reid who's up next, so maybe he can be fieldable for you for just for another week until you can find a better forward option. Moving on to Harley Reid, 4.2k coaches are moving off him, and I, I spoke a little bit about this in my review series that his break even is now 63. His average is 63, so it, that kind of indicates it's the perfect time. He's got Melbourne this week, so that's a pretty tough matchup in terms of, um, you know, midfielders. So it could be disastrous for him, I would say, but I think he can still put up a decent sort of 50 to 60 and be fieldable. But yeah, definitely, I don't mind moving him on if it, if you know, he can get to a better option. I just there's not many options in the forward line, which we've been saying this, this entire time. I know some people are looking at a Fisher this week, even a Sexton has come back into calculations after his 88 on the weekend. Um, I'll sort of get into those a little bit later, but I do think both of those are good options. Um, I've even been looking at this week, if I can get two rookies off and go to a Fisher and a Sexton, then I'd probably absolutely be doing that. That gets you from two, two rookies to at least a mid-price and sort of a keeper, or if you consider both of them keepers, it's just um, I'm probably not going to do that this week because I only technically need to field one um, forward spot, and having sort of Sexton or Fisher in the back line doesn't sit well with me, <laughs> and I need to sort of make a plan around that. So I don't know. I'm probably staying away for just one more week and have a look again. We'll get into those. Um Fisher, oh no, sorry, Sheasel has been a big topic of discussion this week. 3.6k coaches have already traded him out, and I am in the same boat as them. I'm looking to be a bit more aggressive with Sheasel. I'm thinking this role is here to stay for a little while longer, and I expect him to drop, you know, 100, 100k, if not 150k, quite quickly over the next, you know, two, two rounds easily. Um, obviously, you've got Essendon this week, who's been a really tougher matchup for them, and then um, Port Adelaide as well, even if you go, I think, general forwards, which you'd clarif clarify him as. A Messed and Port are really tough, so he can probably put up, you know, 90s, if that. So, yeah, I'm playing a bit more aggressive, just trying to get him off, and, yeah, maybe I'll, if he does get switched back to that half-back role, you know, in the next week or two, then I'll look to pick him up in after his buy, like a like a um McCurcher. so I think that could be a decent play, and I'm getting him probably at 100k cheaper because he'd have to go pretty big from here to stop this cash generation from dropping that low after having two pretty poor, two uh, really poor rounds. So he'd probably have to put up like at least a 130, and then another probably 110 to really stop that cash 
generate uh, cash um, decrease and probably will still be you know at least close to 900k so that's how I'm viewing it I know a few people are sort of staying with him and I have definitely considered holding him just upgrading around him and I do think that's still a very good option it's just I'm sort of playing a bit more aggressive if you're say top 100 or even top 1000 I'd maybe stick with the side of caution with holding him where most of the competition will um, <clears throat> and upgrading around that but because I'm fair way back I want to start to make some aggressive moves and start to separate myself from the competition a little bit so obviously 65% if I can move him off to the likes of Luke Ryan which I've spoken about I think that just turns me away from the competition a little bit and I can make some ground up with there with some points on his head um, what else do you talk about Fisher about Sheasel? Um, obviously, McCurtria is a bit of a span in the works in terms of what is his role going to be like. So, big watch on the teams being announced tonight. It's Thursday I'm recording this. So, um, big watch on who is included. So, if obviously, if a forward's included, then maybe a, Fisher, a Sheasel goes back and supports a likes of a, a Fisher. So, he gets a half roll back and he could put up some decent scores. It is still a tougher matchup in terms of halfback, so Essendon have been pretty restrictive in terms of that recently. And same with Port like, next week. So I'm still thinking it's a decent trade out, even if he does go back. But I'm I'm thinking they're gonna keep um continu continuing with this role. So um, he actually had his second highest um, AFL rating, I think you would want to call it, um, last game. So technically that means it means that he had a pretty good game in terms of his influence on the game. So maybe uh, I'd say Clark probably keeps him there. So we'll have to eventually wait and see. But I still think if you're going to trade out a Sheasel, you have to get an upgrade on the other side. So I'm able to go Sheasel down to Ryan. That banks me about 100k. And then I'm able to use that 100k plus the 90k I already had in the bank to then go a um, McKercher up to a Oliver. So, yeah. If you can't do an upgrade on the other side, or yeah, then I wouldn't be doing it at all. Moving on from Harry Sheasel, we've got Cadman, I think is a good option as well. He's definitely going backwards now after another poor score. Um, yeah, he's probably up there in terms of priorities to move on. Zach Williams is also up there. I know a fair few people have been have just have to hold him for you know a number of different reasons over the last couple of weeks. So I still think he's one to jump off. He's got a decent amount of money in his head. Don't know if he's going to be likely being back this week. What was his injury? Where is he named? No, he's not named in here at all. So he could be likely to come back this week. Just watch teams. If you need to field him, then maybe hold him. But um, he's definitely going to be probably losing some cash. Who's he got? He's got the Swans. Yeah, so. No, he's got Melbourne. So why did I say Swans? Next opponent, Swans. Yeah, sorry. He didn't play last week. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, Swans this week. So that's a pretty tough matchup as well. So I still think you can move him on. People moving on, Elliot Yo, he's probably very similar. Where was he named in the injuries? Elliot Yo is the test this week, so are they going to be a bit more precautionary with him? He trained, so it says Yo trained on Tuesday and is pain free after missing with a groin injury. Rising hopes he'll be available if he puts it together, solid weight contract. Yep. So it sounds like he's going to be all well good to go so he could be a decent one to hold he's got Melbourne this week so again probably a bit of a tougher one but you know we know how good Yo has been he can definitely get close to that if you you know upgrade around him I think he's close enough to a primo that you can probably upgrade around him in my eyes where is yeah yeah I'll probably just hold on to him um, Nat Fife, I've also got Nat Fife, and I'm in the opinion of just holding him until he's by now. That really, round 13 buy is really useful. Um, helps with a lot of structure in terms of, you know, having that round 13 buy, not having to load up in a different area, whereas we've already got the likes of um, two in the in the forward line in round 12 in uh, 
Heaney and Power. Power's probably questionable whether you hold him through that round 12, but I still think you want to be a bit more flexible there. Um, even round 14, I think we have Flanders. Zorko. The Zorko's round 12 as well. Yeah, so Zor if you have a Zorko as well, that's around another round 12, so you could be quite heavy there. Um, I'm tr struggling to think of anyone else. Fisher's round 12 as well. Um, Sexton, if you're looking to pick him up, he's round 14. So just having this um, Nat Fife in the forward line in round 13 just helps with a bit more flexibility. And I do think he can put up some decent points, you know, in the coming weeks just to ease the pain a little bit. Hopefully he doesn't have another game where he has six free kicks against and that would have been closer to a 70 and we wouldn't be talking about it. All right, so hopefully he's good to go. But again, just to finish off on Nat Fife, if the money on his head gets you to that play you want, then I guess he can go. It's just who are you fielding instead, you know? Lazaro can go. Do uh, Dersma can go. Flanders... Oh, not Flanders. What am I talking? I'll get my names all mixed up today. Um, Sanders can go as well. Just probably watch in terms of if he's named, obviously. He could be a really good fielding option this week. Um, does have Giants, but who are a tough matchup, but um, he's obviously been putting up some big scores in the VFL, and he's probably not too far away in terms of a pickup. So, but if he's definitely not named this week, then I think you just cut all ties. He's one that can go unless you need a um, a looping option in your, in your midfield and forward. So, but I think we have plenty of of uh, rookies that are missing at the moment, so I don't think that's too much of an issue. Power people are jumping off power. I, I can see why. Um, Obviously, he's put up two poorer scores of 71 and 77. Following that 34, that was horrible. But I still think 70s are pretty decent in terms of the forward line, so I'm not looking to move off. Essendon have been restrictive recently, but they have traditionally been a easier team in terms of midfielders, like pure midfielders. So I'm hoping he puts up a decent score here. It's just the question around Phillips is my only question. I know... They've both been sort of 50-50 at the moment, with Tom Power probably on the later end of that. So, he's just not scoring much else around the ground. So, he needs a bit more of that inside mid. So, big watch again on teams if Phillips is named. What did Phillips end up scoring? I didn't actually check, but, um, yeah. Big watch on your Phillips is named. So, if, if, if he's not, then I think it's absolute hold. But if he is named, then I wouldn't mind looking at an option to move him on. Let me just quickly get Phillips up here. Did he actually do well? Obviously, you got Bruce got smacked, so hopefully they look to change a few things around. Phillips scored a 65. Didn't have a huge influence. Five five tackles, 14 kicks, uh, 14 handballs, four marks and two tackles. So it's not like he did anything amazing. So hopefully they uh, come to the senses and drop him and then that just leaves power alone and we can hold him for a little while longer. Blake Howes, I I wouldn't be moving him on in, if my, in my preference. Um, if you actually look at his run to come for general defenders, it's actually really juicy. So look at this. Um, Melbourne, West Coast, St Kilda and Fremantle in the next three. All bright green. So I think he's worth holding on to for the next couple of weeks and possibly looking at building him or at least looking to loop him on at some point. Um, we'll get into my team a bit later, but I think I'm going to have to just field him straight away um, just with no looping options back there. So, um, Yeah, so I probably wouldn't be moving off of him. Seth Campbell is drop has been omitted this week. I think I think he has a bit of an injury at the moment, so he should be out this week. Let's have a quick look at that actually. I know he's definitely out this week. I just don't know how long he's out for. Um, one to two weeks with a bit of a knee injury, so he's probably more than likely back next week, if not the week after. Um, I do think he's probably worth me trading out as well. I've got plenty of money on his head with four hundred thirty, so very awkward price. But yeah, he can go. Jeremy Cameron, concussed, can probably move him on. He hasn't been doing what you've been asking for anyway. What is it? Dropped 23k in the last week. So, yep. Cherry is an interesting one. And this is probably where I'll finish it off for the trade-outs this week. 
Cherry obviously put up that 53 on the weekend against a tougher matchup against Wits. Comes up against the Goldstein at Essendon, who has traditionally been a tougher matchup for Ruckman. So, would I be trading out Cherry if I owned him? It's tough. It's very tough. Because who are you going to? You probably have to upgrade to a Marshall or an English. If not, if I'm gone, um, you'd have to be looking at one of those three options. I wouldn't be um, moving off to a sweep because sweep, um, every chance he actually doesn't play again this week with how good um, Dante Vizantini went on the weekend. Maybe sweep comes in to support Vizantini and they run both. I Traditionally, Port haven't done that, so I probably wouldn't look at doing that. I'd definitely be looking at the top and probably my preference would be Gorn, Marshall, and then English. Um, my only flag with English is that um, he's getting a lot more support from Sam Darcy at the moment. I think even on the weekend, he, out of all the rock contests, I think he had over 30% of them. So looking at the stats, I think it was like, um, let me just bring it up here real quick while I have this up. Um, I think they had close to 100 Ruck contest overall. So, yeah. English had 62 Ruck contests, while Sam Darcy had 30. So, that's nearly over 30% right there, um, while Nank had 74. So, they had a lot of Ruck contests overall, nearly 100, and he took 30 of them. So, that's enough flag, and it probably decreases his um, top line by sort of 10 points. So that's probably my only flag. Whereas a Marshall, we've seen what he did on the weekend. He just wants to grab everything out of the ruck and just boot up, put it on his foot. So instead of getting a hit out at one point, he's getting three. So I think lean that way. Even with, you know, the block of Hayes, if Hayes gets dropped because he did, was a sub leap last week, that's even more reason to jump on him. Um, but yeah, I, I don't mind the move off of Cherry. Obviously he's done his job so far. 122 break even. Um, all we were sort of waiting on was this sort of poor score before his price sort of jumped backwards. Tough matchup again this week. And then, again, uh, Port Adelaide are a tough matchup in terms of most players, but in terms of Ruckman, they're pretty straightforward. But he also has his buy in two weeks, so I wouldn't mind holding on to him until then as well. So it's a bit tough there to say. I don't want to be a bit biased to say jump off because I've, I've never owned him. So, But... He has done his job. If you can do a few other things, obviously you don't want to miss out on an Oliver. Um, or if you're not confident with an Oliver, then I wouldn't mind doing this as a bit of a different trade to most. So yeah, uh, doing a Cherry to a Marshall probably is a pretty good trade. And that's probably where we'll finish it on for the mo trade, in, trade out targets. We've already spent 20 minutes talking about that. Crazy. Let's quickly move on to the trade in targets. So... Joe Richards is number three on my rookie downgrades this week. Just not 100% sure on his job security when it comes out of, you know, with with all the inclusions that uh, Collingwood will have in the next week or two. He probably won't stay. And he also put up the 81 against the likes of the Eagles. We have seen a lot of pop scores against them. So I wouldn't say it's going to continue. Maybe he drops down to like a 40 average after this, so that's why I put him a bit lower. Clayton Oliver is my number one trade-in target this week, and you can see that I've traded him in as well. Um, just this sort of sugar hit against West Coast this week should be pretty good, and he has a pretty good run coming up. So um, Collingwood there, North, West Coast, even I said in that pretty been pretty fruitful in the, in the season overall. Um... Yeah, so I think he's going to be pretty good over the, the next period, and we can hold him for a little while. Obviously, super under underpriced. Price is starting to go up now, so definitely bottomed out, so definitely time to jump on him. Puts back 106 and 99. That 99 could have definitely been over 100 quite easily, looking at the game. This looks like he's going to be a first back, tackling a bit more, getting his more hands on the ball in terms of marks as well, so that's really good. Um, and it was really pleasing to say that it wasn't just sort of against Geelong that who are the easiest matchup. It was also against a, um, a Colton who have been pretty restrictive in their time. Um, so yeah, I think he's a right trade and target. Bruce Reveal is probably my number one trading target this week. I've been pretty bullish on him in the last couple of weeks. Just given he's got a pretty good run next two. And then he has the buy in round 12. And he also, the injuries at Brisbane Lions also supports his job security. And 
with the buyers coming up now, job security is massive in terms of you want these players to play during those buyers to give you the most sort of potential scores on the field. So while his scoring may not be massive, like you're probably only expecting sort of 50s to 60s from him, um, but he's going to be there every week for the for the next sort of, um, what's it, say until round 15, so at least sort of next five games from him. So... I think that's pretty. Com- I'd be pretty confident in saying that just with their injuries. If we go back up to their injury list, we obviously know a fair few are out for the season. Gardner, D- um, Coleman, um, Tom Dude, McCarthy is probably where he sort of slots in there. Um, Starchevich as well. Um, Will Aircraft isn't due back anytime soon, so I don't. I don't mind him. I definitely would be of the lot. I think he is the best option. In terms of rookie downgrade, uh, Joel Frazier is, I think, how you would um, pronounce it. Joel Frazier, um, um, probably fourth on my list. I had to throw him there. He's negative one break even, but I don't. I'm not confident with his job security at all. So if you really need to let that lower end of the 200k, then you could go there. But um, I'd probably even look at a 200k rookie before him. Um, then you've got Sullivan, and Sullivan was my number one trade-in target as terms of a downgrade. Before I saw some media that he was in the white um, Guernsey at training for Collingwood, so that sort of just throws up some flags for me that he could possibly be dropped this week, and um, yeah, he probably won't play this week. So big big watch on on teams. If he is named, then absolutely go for it. I think he's a pretty good option. Negative nine break even. Decent price. We've seen what he can do with, you know, some decent scoring. Um, again, be mindful that this was against West Coast. So, But then you also had this one against um, Colton, who only had 43% time on ground. So he definitely can score. It's just whether he's going to be in the team or not. He could even be the sub. So that's also something we've got to be mindful of. Nick Dacos, I still think he is a pretty good option to trade in this week. Um, probably not going to get that instant reward as sort of last week, but in terms of his run, it's not too bad. Nothing substantial. Like, you know, it's a lot of just neutral teams, like Adelaide neutral team. Frio have been pretty restrictive, but then three neutral teams into his buy. So nothing amazing, but I still think um, for his price, he is still a decent option. And obviously he's sort of... Um, D2 at the moment, so do like him. Sam Walsh is an interesting one because he has a very tough matchup in the next sort of three weeks. So let's have a quick look here. Um, yeah, Sydney have been traditionally pretty hard as well, um, but then yeah, the next sort of three are very tricky as well. So, um, I'm probably on the side of not picking him up. I definitely think there's better options, so um, that. What's his price? Not nine sixty. I'd probably be looking at a Dawson instead of him. Even a Butters. Um, all these guys that have a better run. Even a Merritt, if you can spare the extra, I think thirty k. He's a really good pickup. Um, who else did I have on there? Dunkley is around that sort of price as well. So all those guys are really good options if you're looking to spend up on those top line guys. Um, I definitely probably wouldn't be looking at um, a, a Sam Walsh just because he's had those easy ones come through, and that's where he's scored, you know, pretty decently. So he's got some tougher ones coming up, and you want the you want the run is the main goal. Um, Tom Green is an interesting one, obviously. A lot of back backflipping off of uh, <clears throat> his injury in the last couple of weeks. Just because he is getting so cheap now, he's nearly under 800k. Break even to 133. Western Bulldogs this week, we, we saw him go massive... Last year against these guys, he scored a 170. Um, so he could definitely go big against them this week. So I don't mind him as a pickup if he's all you can get to. But I'd probably be leaning to um, pick him up after round 12 where he's sort of bottomed out in price. Right. Moving on. So Nick Martin, you're paying up for it now, but 950k. He's my clear D1 at the moment. He has just been absolutely a gem to start with so far this season. Obviously, gone up nearly 200k. Averaging 111, I didn't sort of expect that from him, but he's been so good. Has a pretty good run. 
you know, for the next couple of weeks as well, even in, in the back half, even if we look at, you know, designated kickouts. Let's have a quick look here. Essendon, North, Rich, um, Gold Coast, tougher ones there, and then, yeah, pretty decent after that. So, yeah, I don't mind picking him up. You're paying for it, but he's going to re reward you for sure. Zach Fisher is another interesting one again this week. Obviously, he's put his hand up twice now in the last two weeks, both 1-0-3. Um, won an easier matchup, won a tougher matchup. So, I I like Fisher, and I, like I said, I was looking at him as well. I just couldn't make, can't make it work in terms of his price. Um, but I do I do like his role, and obviously I've been pretty bullish on him all season. It was just a bit unfortunate that I had to trade him out after his uh, sub game, because I didn't mind what he was doing. Like I thought he was sort of getting around those eighties, and that I didn't mind that at all. And then this is what I sort of expected from him. Once obviously Sheasel moved out of that role, then this is absolutely what um, you'd want. But given that he has two harder matchups to come in the next two, it's probably not worth jumping on just yet. Like I said, I'd only be doing it if you can get two upgrades on that. Um, yeah, just the tough matchups for me, just enough stayed away. Plus, the unknown if Sheasel's going to go back there. If Sheasel does go back there, then I think he could lose some points there. But also, McCurtry isn't there, so that could, you know, probably even out there a little bit. So, I don't mind the pick, and I, I, I'm definitely keeping an eye on him for the next couple of weeks. Because um, I definitely see he has the potential to be a top six defend, uh, forwards for us. So, yeah, if you can jump on, he's still very cheap, going up in price. So, yeah, I, I don't mind it at all. Dane Zorko is next to be traded in, and I can see why. I can definitely see why. He has an awesome run in the next sort of um, four weeks, particularly Richmond, um, Hawthorne, Western Bulldogs, and St. Kilda. All very, very friendly matchups. His role is definitely secure. Um, again, it's just you're paying up for him now, his age bracket. Um, and that's the only reason I can really think of not trading him in at this point. So my sort of rule of thumb is if I can think, think of three reasons not to trade him in, then I don't do it. But I can only think of two with his price and his hamstring um, history. So I don't mind it. Obviously, if you're at the top end and you don't have him, I think he's one to jump on just to... Join the pack because he is sort of hurting you week in, week out with his big scores there. Obviously, he's probably putting 60 points on um, most of those smaller players in our forward line, like rookies. So I think he's one to jump on and probably kind of have to force it, unfortunately. Kind of break your team to get him in. Um, I'm sort of just banking on him, sort of um, being rested over the next sort of couple weeks with, you know, what should be really easy matchups for them. So he may even get rested in these next two games. So that's what I'm sort of banking on. And he puts up some lower scores for us. So non-owners to jump on at a later stage. Bonner, I would not be trading him in at all. I don't know why people are doing that. I know he's been really good. But I don't see him as a top line defender. So I would probably be being staying away. Um, Luke Ryan and probably... Probably a couple more I'll do here. Luke Ryan, I'm looking at trading in this week. Obviously, has a really good matchup in terms of uh, St. Kilda this week and even the next couple too. Um, if we look here, St. Kilda, Collingwood, then Melbourne before his buy, round 13 buy, is obviously really, really useful. Um, so I've been quite vocal there. So I think he's a great trade in Tiger. I think he get instant reward and could be a captain option for you this week. Um yeah, I think most of us that are trading him in are doing that from a sheasel, so um, that's one way to do it. If you're looking to get another defender in, I wouldn't mind him if it, getting him in instead of a midfielder if you're looking that way, but I think a lot of us have defenders, so we're avoiding that sort of area. So, yeah, I, I really like um, Ryan, and I do think he's a bit underpriced for what he can do. Going up, we have seen him pop some big ceiling scores, 161, hoping for something very similar to that as well. Couple more here. Zach Butters, he features in my main trade in targets. I do like him a lot. Um, it probably looks like um, Rosie's not going to play again this week, so I think he can put up another decent score. Um, maybe a bit mindful with Hawthorne, just given, you know, we saw the likes of Sinclair get a little bit tagged last week. Well, not tagged, just a bit of a run roll with, so um, 
we could see something very similar to that again this week. Sexton is an interesting one. I keep saying interesting. I should stop. Um, but yeah, I do like him. Obviously, price is right. He's super cheap. Tough matchup, though. I'll say that. He's got Geelong, Carlton, Essendon, and then comes into St. Kilda after that and has a pretty good run after that. So I'm probably on the side that looking for one more week. Obviously, he got a lot of praises in the match... Um, post-match conference from Damien Hardwick. So I think it's his role to keep at the moment. And the only one that can really take it from him is... Uh, what's his name? Is it a Buddha? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember who, who else could take it off him. It was someone in the um, VFL. But yeah, I, I think it's his to take for a little while. Obviously, he's going to go up in price now. And if he can put up, you know, these decent 80 scores, then that's all I'll ask from him. He took a lot of kick-ins as well, is something that I wanted to say. Have a quick look. I think he took three out of the nine, not ten, sorry. So he's definitely second in line for those kick-ins. Um, Rory Atkins was out. It was only the issue. Was Rory Atkins named this week? Let me quickly pull that up. Um, how could I do that easily? Um, teams, a quick look. Obviously, teams have been named for this round already. So, um, yeah, Bulldog, has, uh, Atkins has not been named. So, that probably spells him another good week, I reckon. Uh, probably just a bit of a flag if Atkins comes back in. I don't think he's injured. I thought he was just arrested. Yeah, he's not named an injury list, so I think he's fine. So, that's probably one flag as well for him. But I think... I think, like I said, I think he's going to stay in the team for a little while longer, especially while Will Power's out. That's sort of the main factor for him being in. Caleb Strong, I still like him as a pick. Probably missed his good, you know, run while he had it. He probably doesn't have such a good run now in terms of midfield usage. Like, if we switch over to midfield, I think it's a little bit tougher. Um, Frio, St. Kilda, then Collingwood, Melbourne aren't best matchups, but there's nothing, like, amazing to sort of jump on at. So, I... Uh, I don't mind him, but again, um, round 13, I still still like that. So, yeah, he's still a pretty good option. He's just now a bit pricey. He's nearly a mule, so don't mind you jumping on him. And that's probably where we'll finish it off for now. Uh, maybe Heaney probably won't be jumping on again. Um, Parker should be back this week, hopefully. Um, Dunkley I do really like as well. He's in my main trade-in target, so I do really like him. Again, um, round 12, buy, so be cautious there if you're too heavy. Um, really, obviously, pricey, uh, but he has a really good run, so I think he can put up some pretty decent scores there. But yeah, we'll sort of just summarise everything that we just spoke about. So we'll go with the main trade-out targets real quick. Um, let me just bring it up as well. I can't actually see it. Where am I? So my main trade-out targets were Roberts, number one. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, so don't need to discuss that too much. He's pretty pretty easy to jump off of with his price and the break-even. Number two, I had Coburn McKercher. Just with the unknown with him being out, I think it's worth jumping off of him. I think more than likely he's going to be out for the next three weeks with you know the two matches coming up, and then he's got his buy. And then he will look to come back after his buy. Just given he's a first-year player, he's only 19. Um, they'll be pretty cautious with him, I would say. So I think he's worth jumping off now. Um, Zach Williams I had at number three. Just I know a lot of people have been trying to get off him for a long time, and he's got a bit of money on his head. Probably, possibly plays this week, but um, tougher matchup again. Higher break even can probably go. Will Graham um, is number four. Just given that you know he's not playing. Um, I know there's a chance he comes back and he can, you know, continue his cash generation, but um, we, we want playing rookies at the end of the day in the bias section. So he's obviously not there. Um, probably look to move him on to a playing rookie and try and get in a decent option there. And I've got um, Harvey Thomas as number four, five, just given his high break even, his price is dropping. Um, I think tougher matchup, but his job security probably is the the thing I like the most from him now that uh, Josh Kelly is out. So big watch on if he's named. So I like that. Moving in to the main trade in target. So we'll go we'll go downgrade targets first. So I got Bruce number one. 
Um, sorry, let's do this real quick. Bruce number one, job security is probably the best of the lot. Um, obviously, his scoring isn't going to be huge. His time on ground is the only concern for me. I think if he had more time on ground, he could definitely score a lot better. So I do like really like him, and he's the one I'd be trading in if I was looking for a downgrade option. Number two, I had Lockie Sullivan. Um, obviously, this is pending if he's named in the full team. I'd definitely be picking him up. He looks really good and can definitely score. Um, I do like his um, role as well. I wish it, he was a, a forward, though. He's got midfielder status only. But I think we've got plenty of um, flexibility there at the moment. So I think he's one to jump on. Number three, I had Jai Richards. Jai Richards, sorry. Um, I put him there. Obviously, low break in of one thirteen, a negative thirteen, two hundred forty-two k. I think he's really good price and really good break even. It's just the job security is my concern. I'm not one hundred percent sure he stays in the team. We can have a quick look at the injury list, which is pretty damn long. Um, my checks probably drew back in the next one to two, so that pretty much cements his side team out. I'd say um, we've got the likes of Bo McCreary as well. So he's doing it back next week. So we're probably only looking at a one-week play, which is unfortunate. Even a um, the goal is back this week. Elliot, uh, Elliot's not due back for a little while, I don't think. Um, yeah, I think that's probably all that's really holding him out of the holding him in the side. So that's the concern for me. Even a Jeremy Howe who's due back in two to three weeks. So I just I'm not confident there. And if I'm not confident, then I'm not worth trading him in because I don't want a dead rookie at the end of the day during the buys. Um, Joel Frazier, as I'll say it, number four, not super confident again, just if you're really looking for a real downgrade option then and you'll really need that, you're really strapped for cash, then I don't mind him as a bit of a, a bit of a cash grab if, if he can stay on the side for the next couple of weeks. And finally, I put 200k rookies in, the, in here as well, just because if you don't like a Bruce... Or a Sullivan, then I think um, we need to look for other options that can stay in. So maybe Josh Fayer is a little bit more expensive. He's 277, but he's been talked up all preseason. Now that Josh Kelly is out and Ash is out, he could definitely slot in there. Um, I definitely don't mind him. Even a Peatling, I know he's a bit more expensive, but he could be a decent option if he is named with the likes of those guys out now. Um, if... He has typically played that sort of role where he's got minimal CBAs. So that's the sort of what Josh Kelly did last week. So let's have a quick look at the CBAs. I think he only had, yeah, he had 28%. So that's that's sort of what Peatling has been doing for a majority of his time in the side. So that could be pretty much a straight swap for Kelly in there, I reckon. So it seems like they have um, Callahan on one side, Peatling on the other side. And then, you know, you got your main three guys inside with Cornelio, Green, and then Ward. So, they'll probably continue with that. Um, what else do I need to talk about? That's probably about it in terms of the trade downgrade options. Um, now, we'll move on to the main trading targets being Oliver number one. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, just the, the value is right at the end of the day it is a cash game so you want to save the money where you can and I think he can be close to a hundred guy if not 105 at his best good run coming up so everything's sort of just lining up for him to really pop at the moment so I think he's a great trading target if you can't grab him this week then he's probably still going to be you know 750k next week and that's still a great buy so don't mind you missing for a week number two I had Zach Butters just with the likes of um, Rosie out probably another week. Really good run. Really good buy. Price is a bit cheaper than the rest of these guys on the list. So I'd really like him. He's saving about 40k on most of the top end guys. So I don't mind him there. He's been super consistent. Um, next one was Zach Merritt. So it's, he's dropped under a hundred uh, a mil, a million dollars for the first time this season so far I think. Um, yeah, so I I like him as a pickup. Obviously, he got a pretty good run coming up. 
in terms of his matchups. Like even after the buy, that's really tasty. So if you're not picking him up for these next two matches up, next two matches, I'd probably be looking at you know after his buy. That's a really good um, target there. So make your decision there. I, st I just think he's a really good option to trade in. He's been super consistent. Just had a poor game last week. Um, number four, I had Dawson. Obviously, it's been highly publicized that he has such a good run coming up. Um, these next four, he's going to be ballistic. I know there's some concern with his role, where he's been thrown a bit forward, where his CBS has dropped here and there, but he's shown he's been able to score pretty consistently over the last, you know, even the whole season pretty much. He's had two sub-100 scores, so I'm not too worried about there. He's going to be a good captain option for you as well, so if you're willing to pay up, I definitely would be. And number five, I had Josh Dunkley. Bit of a unique one. Um, obviously has a really good run in the next two, Richmond and Hawthorne. Even after the buys, it's not too bad for him. Um, again, it's just the buy, round 12 buy, if you don't have, already have green and a... Um, who else is there? You know, we're quite heavy in the, four, in the round 12 buy at the moment, so... Be be careful with that. Um, just keep that in mind, and maybe that maybe let the buy make your decision. But yeah, that's all I really had. So now let's look, move on to the captain options this week. So not, not that one, not that one either. Let's go to fixture. So captain options are going to be super easy this week. I think there are I've got ten, uh, let twelve options here already that I could just see from looking over here. So. Um, just going down the list here, game after game. So you could probably go Took or Anderson in this game. We've seen you know, um, cats are super easy in terms of midfielders, so we could could definitely go with one of them. I think one of them will at least put up a hundred and thirty score quite easily. Even in Darwin, it, the, he took probably plays in Took's favour. I think so. If I had to split between them, I'd probably go Took over uh, Anderson, just for the tackling pressure. Um, no one from the Cats, really. You're not really looking at anyone there. Um, from Friday night, we've got... Um, you can go Heaney, but it's probably not the best option. Probably no one really in this game. Maybe you want to go Sam Walsh. The, a pretty tough matchup for both of them, I'd say. Even if you had a Grundy, I don't mind that. Against the solo um, De Koning, he's been um, a pretty easy matchup previously. Just him alone, so... Um, and we know what Grundy can do at the SCG, so I don't mind that as a pretty good option. Um, probably one we haven't spoken about. I know Grundy had a pretty poor game against uh, last week as well, so um, I'd probably look at holding him just given this matchup. The next one is the big one. We got um, Dawson against um, Collingwood. I think he's going to be pretty good. He scored a 112 and a 172 against them last year, so that just spells all... Uh, yeah. All good signs for him, and I think he's going to be pretty decent. On the other flip side, we have Nick Dacos. He scored a 99 and a 120 against them last year, so not quite the high ceilings, but he could, you know, you could probably throw a VC on him if you're um, looking for a bit of a ceiling there. Um, probably no one else in that game, I don't think. Moving on to the next game. Tom Green against uh, Western Bulldogs has been pretty fruitful in the past. He scored a 170 against them last year, so that could be pretty good. Um, on the flip side, we have Tim English, who is my number one trade, uh, number one captain option this week. He has gone 153 and 151 last year against um, uh, Briggs. So, and Briggs has been even more friendly this year. If we're looking at the um, DFS DVP, he is plus 21 points overall, and that's the highest score we have on this calendar here. So, he's going to have a massive one as long as he isn't rested. <laughs> Which he shouldn't be. Um, where was I? Just given it should be a pretty tough matchup. Western Bulldogs are sort of back against the wall at the moment. They need to sneak in and do everything they can to make finals. If they don't, then things could be pretty disastrous, really. Um, who else do we have? Probably not looking at Bontepelli. Just midfielders are pretty tough against West, uh, against the Giants. Um, moving on. Luke Ryan features in my top five this week as well. Um, he went 150 stinks. 156 against uh, St Kilda in round one last year, and St Kilda have also been really fruit, uh, favourable in terms of um, their what's it called here. So plus 12 points pretty much for all 
des- um, designated kickouts, and obviously Luke Ryan takes all the kickouts for their team. So um, he is definitely a good one to grab hold of, and I think he's going to be a pretty good option. Um, on the flip side, you got Marshall. No real data behind him because I don't think they played together last year. I couldn't find any data, so um, but he, he's been in pretty good form, and I don't mind him under that Marvel under the roof. Um, probably not looking at a steal or even at Sinclair after last week, just given the tougher matchup. Freo have been proven to be a tougher, restrictive matchup for midfielders. Um, who else are we looking at? Next game, we're looking at. Uh, oh, sorry, go back. Sarong's probably another one you could look at. Again, um, tougher matchup. Both are pretty tough for midfielders, so. But Sarong's been pretty consistent all year if you want to throw a C on him. Next game, Brisbane Lions, you got Dunkley. He's been. He's obviously free. Uh, Richmond have been super easy in terms of their um, midfielder midfielders racking up against them, so they don't really care too much. So I think he's a really good option this week. No real data to really back up why I would pick him because he had an injured 72 against them last year. So um, probably why he doesn't feature in my top five, but I do really think he's a good option. Um, even Azorko could be in there as well. Just not sure how much of the ball is going to be in their defensive line. So I don't mind him as well, uh, being there. But yeah, seeing how comfortable he Obviously he put up a massive score only a couple of weeks ago. So I don't mind that there. Moving on to the Sunday, probably looking at some C options in here. So you got Merritt against North. He features in my top five. He went 155 and a 90 against them last year. We've some, seen some pretty decent scores against North in the in recent times with the Sinclair going 150. So um, I think um, Merritt could be, play a very similar role to that. So I don't mind him there. Um, Butters against um, Hawthorne. He went uh, 129 against them last year. Bit of a flag there, obviously, we've spoken about whether he gets some attention with Connor Rosie being out, so one to be mindful of there. Um, probably not when you're looking at Hawthorne. On to the next one, we've got, obviously, Gorn. He's going to be real, probably, most people sees coming into this game. Um, no backup history, because he didn't play against West Coast Eagles last year, but um, we know how fruitful these for this free or ruck lineup has been so plus five points so it's not been absolutely amazing but um we know how good Gorn is and he can be quite quite easily put up a 150 if he's if he's not there so um i think that's all i really had i did put oliver down there as well but i don't think anyone's confident enough to throw oliver uh, a c just yet so he put up a 129 against him last year but that was a very different oliver tilt that we know today so that's sort of where we're sitting, so we'll quickly move up to here and go to my team and I'll show you my top five. Sorry, I don't know why I had that up. Um, my top five captains for the week. English, number one, like I said, 153 and 151 against uh, West um, against the Giants last week, uh, last year, sorry. so I think he will go ballistic again this year. Number two, I had Luke Ryan, um, 156 against... Thank you last year, so I think he'll be good, and we've seen the match up there. Gorn is my number three. Just, yeah, I think he's going to be really decent against, um, what's his name, Williams, so that should be pretty fruitful. Number four, I had Dawson. I've thrown him a bit lower. I originally had him probably second or third, but given the news that Dawson and Laird were sort of on light duties this week, I threw him down just a little bit. But I don't think there's going to be any anything to be too concerned about there. And then I threw Merritt at number five. Just a, a nice matchup. He's been pretty consistent all year. Um, I think he's pretty much a pretty safe captain option if you're looking that way. Um, yeah, so that's my top five. So uh, hopefully that... I think we're in for a pretty big round. I think we're probably looking at some 120... Uh, two, 2,400 scores, if not 2,500 scores this week. Um, moving on from captains, what else did I wanted to say? So now let's get into my trades for the week. I think it's been pretty... <clears throat> I've already said that multiple times so far this week. And it is um, Harry Sheasel to Luke Ryan. And then I've gone Coven McKercher to um, Clayton Oliver. So sort of a bit of a sideways trade from uh, Sheasel to Orion. And then Coven McKercher to an Oliver. Both can score very similarly. But I think just in terms of cash generation and... Um, Points on field, 
these will be better off. Unfortunately, McKercher. I would have loved to hold him because he's been so good. Um, but unfortunately, he's out. And I'm just being a bit more aggressive with a Sheasel, hoping he drops 150k over the next couple of weeks. Then I can pick him up cheap when they sort of come to the senses and they, uh, yeah, they play him back in the halfback. So that's sort of my trades at the moment. This is how the team's sort of structuring up for this week. So um, look, Ryan slots in at D2. He's got my captain's D at the moment. So I'm looking at going um, English as a VC into Luke Ryan. Bit of a, I definitely probably prefer it the other way around, but just the way the fixturing is, I have to run it this way, so not too worried there. Having to field house this week, but like I said, players against um, West Coast, so that's a pretty fruitful matchup for him. So I don't mind that too much. Would have loved to loop around, but because um, Graham's playing so early, I can't really loop anyone, and there's no one to there's no one to loop around, so um, there's no point putting a closey here, and then I can't. Field a Graham. I can't field Howes at all, and then I'm forced to field like a, a Garcia or a Clark. So I think I'm just going to run with Howes on the bench uh, on the field there, just straight up. Um, this is how the midfield sort of structuring up now. A lot of mid prices in there, so do need to start hitting those top line guys a little bit more. But my cash generation is pretty low compared to others. Um, happy with Sharp and Closey on field being the two rookies there. Tossing up whether I put the E on Clark tonight against um, Gold Coast and probably a bit of a sloppier fest. I think he can tackle his way to a decent score. But then it's like, I can't really loop unless uh, a Harvey Thomas is out or even a Garcia is out. But I think he'll probably be the sub. So there's no real point even playing around with that too much, unfortunately. Only place I can really uh, mess around in is the forward line where, you know, I've got Seth Campbell who is out and I've also got a Barnett. So I can possibly look at um, a Garcia here or even a Harvey Thomas. Maybe I'll play it by ear who's the sub, who's not the sub and play them first before Harley Reid because I think Harley Reid plays the last match up against um, Melbourne. So that's how we sort of structuring up for the week. One thing else I wanted to talk about was my buy structure. All right, so looking pretty solid for my buy structure so far. So um, just putting my buy plan over here as well. So got one in one primo in the defense line, one primo in the forward uh, midfielder, and uh, two currently in the forward line. Like I said, Powell's pretty borderline whether he will stay. Um, I'm sort of toying around with whether I trade him out at his buy or not. But yeah, I'm sort of just at the moment I'm holding him as that. that to field there, so um, playing with him is my in my um, my buy planner. So pretty pretty happy there with in terms of only got six players now. So that's pretty light on. That's probably ideal for most people. Probably six to eight is probably max. Eight's probably max players you want to have. Um, so you're still fielding your twenty two. Round thirteen, I've got a fair few thirteen now that I've brought in Ryan. Um, so I've got two primos in the defense line. One in the midfielder, and then I've got Sharp, who will probably go in round 13. Also got Sweet there, and Fife, that could all go. So there's a lot of potential that all three of these go fairly quickly in round 13, if not before, or even after. Depends what happens with Sweet. That's sort of the, the, the issue I'm sort of having is, ideally, I want him for round 14 and 15, when, you know, Gorn and English are out. To cover for that additional, you know, that extra spot, so I can ha I can field twenty two, but um, I think it's unlikely that he will be, you know, number one rock at that point. He'll probably be behind Soldo, so he'll probably go pretty early on. And yeah, I'll probably just field twenty one in those weeks, unless there is someone else puts their hand up as a cheap, um, cheap ruckman as R three. So happy with how this is sort of turning out. It's probably better than most. Um, round 14 is where I'm heavy at the moment and where I'm trying to lower a lot of my standards. But when I'm looking at, looking at it in terms of my primos, I've got one in the defense line, two in my midfielders. Or Clary, I've, I've counted him as an un underpriced primo at this point in time, but he could definitely be a mid-pricer. One in the for, uh, ruck line and one in the forward line. So it's actually pretty spread in terms of like where they're sort of sitting. So that works out really well. The likes of a house probably stays until he's by. Um, Graham will be gone by then. 
Closely will probably be gone on the same buy as well after he sort of used up his cash generation. I'll probably move on Clark prior to the this round 14 just to sort of um, make it a bit easier. And Harley Reid will probably go in the next couple of weeks as well. So, And Barnett's probably staying for the year because I really like him as a looping option. So not too bad. I know it looks worse than it is, but when I look at it in terms of that, I think it's pretty good. In round 15, I'm pretty light on only the, what, 7? So... Um, one primo, one mid pricer, one primo, one primo, um, then a couple of rookies, and Bonner, who is sitting at, in the defence line at the moment, who probably will go at his buy as well to a top line guy. So that's just sort of the plan. I just wanted to touch on that, what, I'm, what my thoughts are around the buyers at the moment. So it's always good to just check in week and week, just to, as we're getting closer. Obviously, we've got only more, one more week after this weekend of two trades and then we come into the three trades so you really want to start filling in those gaps where you're going to start you know filtering some players out so i've already started fiddling in where i'm starting to look at trading out players so and even putting in names that i'm targeting throughout the buyers as well so just something to think about um to finish off the episode we'll just quickly go through some questions i've got a few a few questions here so um let's bring that up real quick so we've got a question from Kate. I realised that was a Kate, not a Kath. Um, so Kate has asked, thoughts on holding McKercher to trade him or trading him out this week? Uh, sorry. Ugh, I can't read. Um, thoughts on holding McKercher or trading him out next week? So I don't mind holding him this week. Just if you have other things that you want to do, you have other priorities. So if you're, say, you're saying you're holding him allows you to trade out Cadman and fixing up your bench, I definitely think that's a pretty good option. At the end of the day, McCurcher isn't going to be losing you money this week, whereas a, a Thomas pro, a definitely will, and um, even a Cadman, def, as you said, is going to lose some cash as well. So if those those guys get you to that upgrade that you're looking for, I'd definitely look that way over a McCurcher. Then you can look at trading out McCurcher next week or even holding him if he plays, right? Um yeah, you go on to say you, you're able to still get um, Oliver from for Roberts. So you look at you're definitely trading at Roberts, and then it's just a Cadman or a McCurcher. So I definitely like the trades of Roberts to Oliver, then a Cadman to whoever you're getting. So looks like your team's in pretty good nick. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, got this question from Hayes Reed 9 Thoughts on Zach Guthrie? And I... Not the shit on the pick. I don't like the pick. Um... Where is he? I know he has been really good in the last, you know, three matches. If I could bring that up here. Um, you know, averaging well over 100. But I just don't like it. It's not not a, f a pick that I generally go for. It's a bit of a risky one. Um, you got the likes of Holmes back there. you got the likes of Stewart, who's been probably a bit underwhelming. There's only a matter of time before he starts to pick up his influence again and um, that leads Zach Guthrie probably where, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a nothing pick in my eyes, and now he's over 700k. Um, he's not going to be top six, so I don't really want to be messing around with these mid-priced defenders or even mid-priced um, midfielders, really. So, don't really like the pick, unfortunately, there. Um, next question comes from Sam Adams. And he asks, uh, Fisher or Sexton? So, obviously, two very cheap forward guys that you're looking at this week. Um, I like both. I really do. If I had to choose one, oh, it's tough because you've got 150k difference there in terms of their price. Both have really tough matchups. I'd probably let your buy structure determine that for you, I would say, Adam. No, Sam. Um, so if you're heavier in round 14, then go Fisher. If you're heavier in round 12, then go um, Sexton. I think both can be very similar in terms of the output. Um, maybe Fisher has a bit more of an upside in terms of his scoring. He probably go 100 a bit more consistently, where I see Sexton probably closer to 80 to 90. So, but then the 50, 150k price difference is um, pretty huge. So let you buy um, determine that for you, I reckon. Um, got next question comes from Lockie Russell. Do you tick off uh, Sheasel and Xeri to Oliver and Zorko? Would you do anything else with Roberts, Cherry, or 
Sheasel, 98k. Um, so, I don't mind moving off a of Sheasel either, as I've said. I'm doing, and obviously you're moving off a of Cherry. Obviously, uh, the Cherry one's an interesting one because you're moving him to a, a forward. So, I'll be questioning who you're fielding as your R2. Maybe you've got a Sweet on the bench, so um, be careful there whether um, Sweet is named this week, obviously. Um, if he's not, then you pretty much can't move on a Cherry or you move him up to a, a Marshall. Because it looks like you'll be able to get... If you're able to pay for Zorka, then you you can pay for a Marshall. So uh, that's probably the way I'd go, moving... Probably moving a Sheasel down to an Oliver, then a, a Cherry to a Marshall. I don't mind those trades. But you've also got Roberts there, who's probably more of a priority than a, a Cherry, I'd say. So maybe you do a Sheasel and a, a Roberts to Oliver, then whoever's the best primo you can get up to, like a, a, a Dawson. What's the price? It's hard to do without the calculations, but I try and get up to the best player that you can. Uh, maybe you don't have the 900k that you're looking for, but there's some decent options around there. Um, maybe say, even save the coin and go with a, a, a Fisher or a uh, Sexton. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back to that question a little bit more when I've done some more calculations. I'll try and do that while answering some questions. Um, next one comes from Connor James. John, sorry. Um, Sarong or Merit? So I have Merit above Sarong. Just given that, uh, yeah, just better run. I know the buy is better in Sarong, but I just think Merit has been more consistent. Price is very similar. Um, so I just think, yeah, I, I like Merit better than the Sarong, so I'd be going there. But again, look at your buy structure. See if that's going to make much of a difference for you. Um, sorry, just doing some calculations real quick. So looking at my calculations, back to your sarong, uh, back to your back to your question, Lockie. Um, you have nine hundred and sixty nine k remaining if you trade out a Sheasel and a Roberts. Who does that get you? That can get you only ten k off of Dawson. That's annoying. Um, can I go price range here? Not average. Go Walsh. Marshall, maybe just got steel. Like steel's been super consistent, but again, flag. He's got some knee concerns. Yeah, I can see why you're struggling a little bit in terms of. There's not and not really anyone under that 950k range that you can really get to, being 10k off of the Dawson who I'd go absolutely. Um, but yeah, you you got plenty of money to play around with there, so I'm sure you can't. You can make a pretty easy decision there. Moving on to the next question. We've got a, sh a question from Sean. Hey, mate, not sure on if I should hold Sheasel or not. Which way would you go? So he's got Sheasel and Roberts to Luke Ryan and Oliver. Very similar to what I'm doing. Leaves him 167k left in the bank. Or he can go Roberts and Lazaro to Oliver and a, um, Richard. So this is probably the question of the week right this is what a lot of people are looking at whether to trade cheese or not because we can still get an upgrade on the other side which i don't mind which is what i'm doing so um it depends where you're sort of sitting i guess obviously again look at your buy um moving off of moving off two round 12 players probably pretty handy so that probably leans in the favor of both of them like both help you there um, this is depending if you need more around 15 players or around 13 players, I think. I think in the end of the day, Luke Ryan and Oliver are going to give you a lot more points on field than uh, keeping a Sheasel and an Oliver. So it's pretty much asking Luke Ryan, Oliver, or Sheasel and Oliver in terms of their scoring, and I think Ryan will definitely give you more points this week. Um, also leaves you more cash in the bank for next week. Maybe, maybe you can make a big upgrade, maybe to a Dawson or something like that, so... I'd probably be leaning to Sheasel, but depending where you ranked, um, if you ranked higher up, I'd probably lean on the side of caution and hold Sheasel. But if you're way back like I am, then you can probably make some aggressive moves. Next question, we've got a couple more here. Um, this is from XDG Force. Is it worth hold? Uh, is it worth doing five to Clary and Reed to Green? 
I mainly threw this question in here is because I do like these options. Obviously, they're both great options. Clary and Green are great underpriced options, and you're moving off of a mid-price and a, a rookie to get to those players, so that's really good. But it's just you're moving off two forward players and you're bringing in two midfielder players. So who are you fielding then? Like who who what what players do you have in your forward line that you're fielding there? So I wouldn't be doing that if you're fielding you know the likes of a, a Garcia or a Thomas or um whoever a, a Richards and stuff like that. I probably wouldn't be doing that. I don't feel comfortable with them on field. Whereas Harley Reid is decent on field. Um, and then you're probably loading up your midfield a bit too much where you're moving off a sharp and a close or a close here in the back line. Something, something like that. So I don't. I really like those trading targets. It's just maybe that if you can do it another way where you're not moving off of these two forward guys, then I'd look at that. All right, and the final question comes from Jim. Jim GG. Um, can I get in green this week if I haven't got much cash for anyone else? And my only round 12 buy players are She's or Power and Golden. So I think, like I said, green's a very good option. Very underpriced. Um, if you can't get to anyone sort of any more significant, then I do really like him. Obviously, it sounds like you already have a Oliver if you're not looking his way. Um, so, yeah, I do really like him as an option. So jump on him. Um, but my preference would be, obviously, after round 12 when he sort of bottomed out in price. So I don't mind that. Um, and you also follow up with another question. Thoughts on Cherry and Roberts to Green and Oliver. And you say you're fielding Sweet as R2 and it could be a bit risky. Um, again, Sweet may not be named, so big watch there with that one. Um, but yeah, I do I do really like Green and Oliver as a trading option. So a lot of people looking at very similar similar situations this week so I, that's really good in the community so <clears throat> but that's all of it for today i oh, sorry if i didn't get to your questions i'll be answering your comments uh your, yeah your questions in the comment section of last video and this video so drop your questions in the comments and i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible obviously teams are being named pretty shortly so yeah hopefully you go well this week um please leave a like and subscribe and please tell your friends um, we're on the road to 750k, 750 subscribers, so um, less than 100 away from that now, so um, hopefully we can get there soon. Um, but yeah, besides that, hopefully your trades go well and you have a pretty good weekend and you can climb up in the ranks. I'll leave you to it. Have a good one. Bye.